rare fryer owner. Yeah, yeah, you know, this guy is definitely a Pokemon villain who would kill everyone who does not own an air fryer. I like that the, that the, for the PIC, they were like, all right, there's, there's, uh, like, nine members, but only two of them matter, so the rest are just random men. <laughs> uh, no, that one right there, I think, is a woman. That, okay, that doesn't really change my point. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? You have uh, two women on the board. Technically three, actually. You have three, and you kill one of them. Right, because right, it's right. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, wait a minute. How many members were there in total? Ten? Oh, I don't remember. I thought there were nine members. Oh, well. Uh, we could just have Granny get in there. She'll she'll do it. Now, this, this kid. This kid's got the chutzpah. Welcome back to, welcome back to investigations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, that's just happened. Gate Order tension. in the court. Woman yes. walk onto Wonderful. screen, pulls out hammer. Yes, yes, I'm all here for it. Prosecutor von Karma, your report, please. I have bad news. We've searched every inch of the Grand Tower, but. The auction gavel was nowhere to be found. <laughs> that is most unfortunate. It seems I am left with no choice but to pronounce a verdict. Boy, that's, uh, really silly. But you're on our side this time, right? Well, it seems that way, you know. Normally, you wouldn't commit a blunder like leaving behind the murder weapon, you know. The best criminals would never do something like that, you see. <sighs> I don't have enough information. Is this as far as I can go? Yes, yes, it's a shame, you know. But it can't be helped, you see. This takes me back, you know. All those defendants who came to me asking for a plea bargain. They trusted me, you know. Told me every one of their dirty little secrets, you see. And when it came time for the trial, I'd get them sentenced to life in prison. This is an interesting thing to just... <laughs> To declare. Johnny Fies will no longer be smoking pot in public. Disgusting. They were all completely dumbstruck, you know. Each and every one of them. <laughs> it's a wonder their friends haven't killed me yet. Oh, how I wish y'all could have seen it, you know. The stupid look on their faces. Do you think that the, like, the other like PIC members are like, Wait, are we the bad guys? No, no, no. We're, uh, we're the judges. I shall hereby announce my verdict. Please humbly accept the words of the law. There's nothing more I can do with this, both Kai and I are... Kai and I, not Kaya. If only we had some evidence. I never thought that I would be passing judgment on you like this. Oh, you mean like the other 18 times you've tried to pass judgment on us like this? Is this the end? This is the end. The defendant, Blaze the Best, I hereby indict you. What? What? Oh, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? I have here documents regarding a certain case. The IS-7 incident, a case that happened 18 years ago. Documents, you say? Why would you suddenly... Wait, you don't mean... On the day of the crime, the record of your keycard being used was because... I came to this room to fetch these documents, of course. Although, when I entered the meeting room, it seems it was before the black market auction had begun. At first I told you that I came to gather documents about you, Prosecutor Edgewell. At that time, I simply could not tell you the truth, because fucking, you know, gotta save our plot twists for later. I have to girl boss in secret. What are you doing, Justine? Why are you dying pops? Without any basis. This is slander. That was a wonderful remark, Sebastian. <gasps> really? Was it the best remark? I wouldn't go that far. Of course there is a basis. During the case 18 years ago... I would say it's quite based. Prosecutor Manfred von Karma fabricated information regarding the body. That was because the body of the sculptor, Isaac Dover, had been stolen. 
she she would not fucking say Papa. Are you f fuck you? Didn't fuck you, she fans. call like, her she father Papa? Ne never, never. I think she maybe, did call her father Papa. Maybe in the fucking anime, like when like they flash back to her as like an eight year old girl. I, I think not, she does call her father Papa. This that feels. I I I can't, I can't, it feels so wrong to say in her voice. Like I can't do it. I could say Mew lines. I can't do the voice and say Papa. That's that, that, that's not that's not her. <laughs> okay. Hold Live sent to ship. Here we go. Hold on. No, I can do it. Hold on. She has to charge her Papa. Oh no! I, I was gonna say Papa Crystals, and I thought about yeah, it for a second. Yeah, like, no, I, I don't, yeah, okay, okay. That's that's that. See, that's worse. So I can actually just do this fine. <laughs> Papa fabricated information about a body. What do you mean? Detective Laser, who handled the initial investigation, reported that the body had gone missing. However, in order to deceive Prosecutor Von Karma, there was a person who purposely did not report to him that the body had disappeared. What? What? What did you say? That person would not forgive those who defied him, nor would he allow others to hold power. He would use any means necessary in order to bend others to his will. You know, the guy from Dual Destinies. And then, also 18 years ago... The director, director Young. Young... I didn't realize there was a button to do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll promise not to press that button anymore. There's a button to, like, super go the text. Neat. Something about Director Young. That's all she said. Yeah. Dr. Young was the one who wrote the autopsy report for the I-7 incident. But please wait, Granny didn't do anything wrong. She was ordered by that person. She had no choice but to obey. That person? That person was the chief prosecutor at the time. The chief prosecutor 18 years ago? You don't mean... The chief prosecutor... Who gave Papa his first penalty? She does call him Papa. I, I'm right. No fucking shot. I, no, I, I genuinely think she has called him Papa in the past. I do recall that. <clears throat> Maybe lately she says my father because she like disregards him, but it was none other than you, Blaze the best. Oh, I gave a prick a, I gave a prick a, 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 a down. He, he, he lost. He got a penalty. What do you want from me? You saying I'm a bad guy? What, what are you saying? Boss would never do something like that. Sebastian, we do not need your opinion right now, nor have we ever. <laughs> Blaze the best. Do you have a rebuttal? Haha, uh -huh, but fabricating stuff about the body. <laughs> Von Karma did all that on his own, you know. Falsifying the autopsy report. Young. You would actually do something like that. Man, you really did some terrible things behind my back, you know. Seeing as how all the parties concerned are here today, we should ask them directly. But please wait. Granny is... Ouch. Granny, I'm sorry. I knew. That's why I... Yep. Because if I didn't, he said he would expose you. If I didn't assist in the crime, Granny would be prosecuted. That's what that man, the conductor, told me. That's a damn shame. So Miss Jensen was being threatened. Was the conductor who threatened you blazed the best? Th that, I don't know. The person who threatened me was the auction conductor. They do have similar physiques, but I never saw the person's face. Any trivial thing is fine. Give us a characteristic that could be a clue. Well, they were always talking about how their son, Sebastian, sucks fucking eggs. Also, they were lighting everything on fire with a <laughs> fucking handheld lighter. Th that's right. The conductor's mask, it exposed just a tiny part of his face. There was a tattoo there. I'm sure of it. Well, he doesn't have a tattoo. Well, it, I think he, it's under his beard. A tattoo, you say? It's probably a ah, thing. my ears. I really have no idea what you're talking about, you know. As you can see, there are clearly no tattoos on my face, because I have no room for them, you see. So that person doesn't match me at all, you know. The person who threatened her, this so-called conductor. I wonder who it is, you know. 
Ha 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 Normal people laugh like that, right? Uh, is it, it's like a full-on, like, me laugh. Like, ah ha ha. You have incurred the wrath of the goddess of law. I suggest you watch what you say. Hasn't he incurred your own wrath, rather than the wrath of the goddesses? I am the goddess of law. Jill Crane had been pursuing you, just as I have. And I will not let her death be in vain. Crane was... Oh, you know... You say she was pursuing me? My, my... I didn't really know her that well, you know. I don't mind girls chasing after me, you know. But I don't recall her ever falling for me, you see. You didn't know the victim well. That is a testimony we haven't heard up until now. Before the eyes of the Goddess of Law, you shall give us an official testimony. Oh, brother. I see, I see. Everyone's bullying me. <laughs> He's Kokichi. <laughs> if you're gonna go that far, that's fine, you see. I'll just take it out of my son later. I'll oh, just have bleach to bleach in his eyes. <laughs> I'll just have to make you disappear. That that's was you disappearing. Eye, that's why I have the eye goggles, so he can't wear them. Every last one of you. Is that a threat? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall cooperate with you as well. Uh, sure. I finally have a competent partner. If we let this op this case just like, hey, if you we don't let remember. this opportunity slip by, I doubt we will ever get him to stand in court again. Unironically, Kay has actually been pretty competent. Gumshoe is not typically competent. Kay's not great at connecting the dots, but she's really good at, like, getting evidence. Sometimes getting she is good at connecting the dots. Yeah, so sometimes. Not not as much as, like, you know, Edgeworth or Courtney. No. Please, do not let this chance go to waste. Yes. Wow, my hand is almost as large as yours. Now that they're side by side, I... Hmm. Welcome to the left side privilege. I promise I will live up to your expectations. Yes. The power of Yaoi hands will be victorious. Now then, Blaze the Best, you shall testify regarding the victim. Holy shit, his eye. I think we commented on that before. Yes. It looks, like he got, it looks like he got bleach poured in his eyes. Well, he's constantly flooding his eyeballs with rain tear water. I guess it's to undo the damage from the bleach, but it doesn't work. Yeah, he has, like, this evolutionary method to prevent bleach destruction. <laughs> evolutionary. The victim, Jill Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee, you see, or the PIC. Personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know. Either way, it's not like I had a motive to murder her, you know. I have no idea why she was pursuing me, you see. You intend to deny your guilt until the bitter end, don't you? Of course he does. There's no way Pops could be a criminal. I mean, he's my pops, you know. He's the very best, like no one ever was. Okay. Plus two. Yes, yes, Sebastian. If you're gonna stick up for me, be sure to have a clear basis, you know. All right, I got it. I'll clear these false accusations, Pops. I believe in you, Pops. We won't lose to someone like Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, yes. You really are pure, you know. That person, he really loves his father, doesn't he? However, one must be able to accept the mistakes of their father. No matter how much they may look up to him. Each person must atone for their crimes, no matter who they are. This is going to be hard for Sebastian, but... I simply cannot overlook his father's crimes. I'm glad that people give a shit about Sebastian, because it would have been very easy for them to just be like, who cares about this twerp? Anyways, moving on. I mean, he is he is a total twerp, but he's like, he is, he's a good-natured twerp he, he's, sometimes. He's, you know, he's like a, he's like, he's a stooge who's being manipulated, and it's like, you should just be, you should be able to be a stooge in your own way. My victim, Joel Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee, you see. Personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know. I sound like a motive to murder her. I have no idea why she was pursuing me, you see. So I think we have evidence that he knew her. I believe that that makes sense. What was up you with these, by the way? You check me if... 18 years ago. Yep. 
you know, every, you know, every Ace Attorney game has that, like, oh, that case from the past, like, blah, blah, blah. Th this game, I actually am a lot more into it, because they actually made us fucking play the case. Like... Yeah. Like, that, that, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to give a shit about, like, the mysterious case from the past, because we, f we fucking experienced it as if it was a mainline case. It would have been cool to do DL6. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what's on page two? Lead person, Scones, Hall, Gustavia. There are no clues to whereabouts of Dover's son or Gustavia's son, who, until the day before the incident, regularly visited at Mr. Master's mansion. Okay, so this is just a bunch of shit from the case before. Yeah, that might be relevant later. Um... Conductor prepared wigs, so the crane could be impersonated. For some reason, there's both a straight wig and a wavy wig. Um, since we're straight straight the wavy wig. So I'm pretty sure that wavy wig is like his beard and it's like covering his tattoo or something. Yeah. But that's some that's for later. The fact that she prepared it tells us that obviously she did know. <clears throat> I mean you could well, the burn mark doesn't prove anything even though it's probably from him. Yeah. Uh I think Kay's memory or not the memory, the the, the doll animal yeah because it it, it it we i guess we can't prove the audio is um can't prove the audio is him but it does talk about knowing her like i knew who you were right away you can't hide that burn from me uh dot 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 silence huh Oh, actually, check the letter. I want to read that. See, Miss Crane, thank you for helping with my plan. Blah, blah, blah. Next page. Or back from 12 years ago. Okay. Has a facial tattoo. Oh, right, this that's... is all about the conductor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just don't have a lot of evidence about Blaze, right? Maybe this isn't the right line? Here's what I'm going to do. Press. It's time to press my body into him. She was a member of the PIC, then you should have been familiar with her. Well, I knew her face, but that's about it, you know. It's not like we met each other on a regular basis, you see. So you're saying you weren't very familiar with the victim? That's right. I didn't even know about the burn mark on Gray's hand, you see. You didn't know about the burn mark? Well, you see, even if I had gotten close to her, she would have disappeared soon. It's a pain to remember someone, you, you know. Had a, you, you had some internet blips. I missed the second press. I don't know if this is still the second press or not. Yes, this is. Good internet blips. Basically, it was the same idea of, are you sure you didn't know her? And he's like, yeah, I didn't even know about the burn mark on her hand. And he's talking about how if I had known she was going to die soon anyway... It would have been a pain to remember her because, you know, she was going to be dead. It's a pain to remember someone, you know, when they're just going to disappear, you see. In other words, anyone who defies him disappears. I would like you to add that statement about the victim's burn to your testimony. <clears throat> and this is where we can consider what was said on the doll. Maybe. But because on the doll... Like... But it doesn't prove that he knew, right? Like, it just proves that somebody knew. Whoever this is, if we could prove that this is him, which it is. It, like, it's him, but we can't prove it's him. Although, I don't know if it's actually him getting revenge, or if, like, it's... I don't know. Um...
It's something. Is yeah, there any I mean, way that we can do something with that? It might be a situation where you press, like, an additional time. Ah, shit, I pressed this wrong thing. Well, you can read this now. I see. Okay. Here we go. So you're saying that you didn't know about the victim's burn. Is that really the truth? You really are persistent, you know. You don't really think I would pay attention to every little wound on a woman's hand? I would think the burn mark on the victim's hand would be hard to miss. Now that you mention it, Jill Crane would regularly wear gloves. I, too, did not know about the burn until the incident occurred. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. I thought so. She was probably trying to hide the burn mark, you see. I understand how sensitive a woman can be about these things, you know. Kyoko moment. I'd like you to add your so-called sensitive understanding of a woman to your testimony. That's one of the best Edgeworth lines in the game. <laughs> Is it the rare triple press? It could be. I just had a thought. Hmm. What if we are able to, like, get close with Blaze here, but aren't able to totally make it? Then, in case 5... Justine dies, and the whole, like, crux of the final trial is getting the best to, like, man, like, up enough and just, like, take down his father and just be, like, the, the cool prosecutor who always believed he was. As long as they don't refer to it as manning up in the game. I mean, okay, well, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> he, uh, he, he the bests up. He, he mm -hmm. bests up. Becomes yeah, the best he, he can be, be. He bees his best self. Be the best man you can be. Um, so, uh, yeah. Probably, yeah. Like so you were aware that she always wore gloves? Well aware. Those gloves were practically her trademark, you see. But I guess they weren't just a fashion statement. She wanted to hide her burn mark, you know. I wonder if that girl over there is also hiding something under her bandages. Uh-huh. I'm not hiding anything. I think you are, you know. You're hiding the face of a criminal. Those words should be directed at someone like you. I shall expose, here and now, the face of a true criminal. Ha 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 amusing. Go ahead and try it, if you think you can. I will warn you, though, that it's impossible. So Jill You're Crane really regularly wore... <laughs> so Jill Crane regularly wore gloves, huh? That's interesting. Also, we keep saying that's impossible, but the actual line is it's yeah, impossible. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, that's interesting. I should look over the evidence one more time. It might be on the line we just <coughs> pressed. It might be presenting the stuffed animal because it's like in the the person here talks in in the voice line. It talks about her how, having the like, burn mark. Yeah, and specifically says like you can't hide it from me. So it's like. Oh, actually, that's interesting. I knew who you are right away. If she's always wearing gloves, then... That's, that's I think weird. that's just him saying that I know who you are because I know you for more than just the burn mark. Still, I, I would... I would. I think this is a bit... Yeah. LG. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. If that is true, then it creates a huge contradiction. Oh, a huge contradiction, you say? I would like you to listen to the voices recorded on this stuffed animal one more time. I've read this, like, several times. Yeah. We were under the impression that this was the moment when the victim was murdered. I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. We thought that this statement was said by the culprit. It isn't that fine. What's the problem, you know? <laughs> well, there's a huge problem with that. If the victim had been wearing gloves from the start, it would have been impossible to see the burn on her hand. 
Gloves come off very easily, you know. She could have taken them off during the auction. To get her fingerprints on everything. Yeah. An incriminator. Why would you do that? I mean, I guess she did burn her hand, but I don't know if she burned off her fingerprints. That's... That's not true. No, that's wrong. Miss Crane had been wearing her gloves when I took her place. She must have been wearing them before she was murdered. You know, I think everyone's ganging up on me today. What do you say? You, you don't understand the position you're in. I... I'm not scared anymore. I have Granny here with me. And she'll never hurt me. She'll never concuss me. Blaze, your day of reckoning has finally come. Is you know, somehow it seems like you all want to disappear. <laughs> Permanently. So I guess his, uh, his gotcha Ow. will be he burns his fucking beard off and it's too you hot. Know, you all shouldn't come to school tomorrow. I Except you, guy's... you're cool. I just realized that, you, that your voice room kind of sounds like Heath Ledger Joker. You you mentioned that last time, yeah. Did I? Yeah. Well, I just I forgot and then realized it again. The only one who will be disappearing here is you, Blaze the Best. In fact, because you noticed that, you also started doing his voice sometimes and doing your own Heath Ledger impression. <laughs> Yay! How dare you say that to my pops? <laughs> it certainly does matter. If the burn mark was visible, then we'd have a complete turnabout of the situation. He said it. What? What are you saying? If the victim's burn mark was invisible, what exactly does that tell you? The culprit also had a burn mark. Dun 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 dun. dun. <coughs> Sebastian, turn your way of thinking around. If the victim was wearing gloves, then her burn mark could not have been seen. In that case, whose burn mark was seen? Someone else's burn mark. Precisely. The culprit must have had a burn mark as well. In other words, I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. The person who said this was not the culprit, but the victim. What? What? Hey, hey. Hey. What? Objection. You know, Sebastian, could you please step aside? Hedgeworth, all of your reasoning up until now was just a figment of your imagination, you know. The culprit had a burn mark. Where was it, you know? If you can't answer that, then your logic doesn't hold up, you know. Where was the culprit's burn mark? I wonder where the burn mark could have been. During the auction, wasn't everyone wearing a disguise? Indeed. During the auction, everyone should have been dressed in a particular way. I like her smile sprite in, in the, in the, in the, yeah. like the smile, smile sprite. It's very, it's very tender. She's like a mother looking after her children, like kicking the shit out of each other in like the mud. It's like yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. The burn mark was still visible under these conditions, then. Now, now, why don't you show us? Where was the culprit's burn? You'll have to show me the proof, you see. Um, well, the mask... Dude, dude. Uh... So maybe the facial tattoo is the burn. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. It was what the conductor was wearing during the auction. In other words, the outfit you were wearing at the time. <laughs> what can you figure out from the clothes alone? The conductor had been wearing a white suit, white gloves, and a mask. His attire had covered up most of his skin. However, according to Miss Jansen's testimony, the conductor's mask exposed a small part of his face. This was a very stupid mask to grab. I don't, I don't know why he, he grabbed that mask. I just like to live on the edge. In addition, while she thought there had been a tattoo there, it's possible that she simply mistook the burn mark for a tattoo. A burn mark on his face. Objection. That's all very scintillating, but I'm afraid you're getting excited over nothing, you know. None of the PIC members have any burn marks on their faces, you see. Naturally, that includes me as well, you know. P Pops, but... Sebastian, could you please be quiet if you're an idiot and act like one, you know. Oh, he knows. Normally, Sebastian's a nuisance to everyone around him. 
but this time I owe my gratitude. That reaction from Blaze's own son, it reveals the truth more clearly than anything else. Thanks to him, I'm confident that my reasoning is correct. I know who that unidentified piece of evidence belongs to. I wonder what's wrong with that prosecutor. Usually Sebastian's slower to arrive at the truth than anyone else. Hey. However, this time he's probably figured it out. His own father is a criminal. Since he knows the truth, he's in pain, isn't he? If he didn't know the truth, he could have remained blissful in his ignorance. Okay. We're here in order to pursue the truth. It doesn't matter what path my reasoning takes, the important thing is to arrive at the truth. Once before, when I lost my faith in my reasoning, you said that to me and showed me the way. This time, I shall show you the truth. You are innocent. I... I also want to know the truth. Mr. Edgeworth, please tell me. Yes, that's the spirit. <laughs> That's impossible, you know. Oh, no, he said it. For all of you. I mean, just where could I possibly have a burn mark? It's nowhere to be found, you see. There's no evidence to prove that I'm the culprit, you know. That's right. There's no contradiction at all. There's no way there could be a contradiction. Not for my pops. There's a contradiction. Eat cereal. Sebastian, I understand why you don't want to admit it. However... If you avert your eyes from the truth, you'll regret it forever. <gasps> Pops, I, I... Just what should I do? <gasps> I really wonder why you're such an idiot, you know. Sebastian, if you really want to save me, you have to try a little bit harder, you see. Gotta use your head, you know. Honestly, you really are a useless idiot. <gasps> no way. I tried real hard. I tried my best, Pops. I went to school like you told me to. Reached the top of my class just like you told me to. Just look at this jacket. Only someone who graduates at the top of his class gets to wear it. I did everything you told me to do. That's how I got to be the best in the Academy. I even won all those awards just so I could be like you, Pops. Here's the transcripts. You don't have a degree anymore. Oh. You really are such an idiot, you know. You know, those gold stars you got on your tests. I made the teachers give them to you. Every speech and debate contest, all the judges were my friends. You know, Sebastian, if you weren't even able to notice something like that, you're really not worthy of being called my son. Don't you think? <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, even my son has disappeared. <laughs> oh my, it's enough to make me cry, you know. He was trying his best for me, and yet he was totally useless, you know. You are truly a despicable person. As the chairman of the PIC and as a father. And that's coming from the guy who had bleach poured in his eyes on the regular. Even I feel sorry for that foolish prosecutor. I don't want to know what my father did. Or Mr. Prosecutor. Blaze the best. You. Just what do you think of your own son? He's just a useless pawn, you see. Whoa, now. Maybe you should look into the mirror before you criticize me, you know. I mean, even you. You also used Sebastian to get close to me, didn't you? I cannot deny that. However... He is not a mere pawn. He always tries to do his very best, even if the results aren't up to par. I've seen just how hard he tries, and yet he refused to even acknowledge it. You know, <laughs> that kid's no good, you see. No matter what he does, or is told to do. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the goddess of law to you. Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze de Best. Yes, that was my intention. From the beginning, if there was a burn mark on the conductor's face, then Blaze DeBest must be hiding it. What was he wearing during the auction? That is, the key to revealing the truth. Well then, allow me to hear your answer. Please show the piece of evidence that proves the culprit had a burn mark on his face. That... 
would be... This. Uh, because of the prepared wig. Oh, right. If you would recall Miss Jensen's testimony, there's still one point that remains unexplained. Two types of wigs have been prepared, one of which was left unused. Do you mean the wavy wig? What are you talking about? It was something Miss Jensen found when she switched places with the victim. What does something like that have to do with the burn? Inside the costume trunk, Miss Jensen witnessed two wigs. One of them had been used by Miss Jensen to make her look like the victim. Now then, just what was the other wig used for? It doesn't seem like it was a spare wig. There's no need to overthink it. Just compare the attire of the true culprit, the conductor, with that of Blaze de Best. Mm, don't stare at me like that! Oh, don't you think that's just one spot where there is a huge contradiction? Specifically around his face. So that's... not a wig at all. Indeed. It was no wig. Blaze the best. It was your fake beard! You know, for some reason, nobody questioned the, how I grew this magnificent mane. I think that, like, he probably has been wearing it, even before this incident. Probably. <sighs> well, <laughs> this was a real beard, you see. Don't tease me like that, Edgeworth. I put a lot of work into this. Your son must have realized the truth before anyone else. That's why he was trying so desperately to protect you. You were also worried that he would tell the truth. Isn't that why you drove your son away from here? Because he knew that his father was hiding a burn under his fake beard. Plays the best. How about you remove that fake beard of yours? Yahoo! It burns! Oh my god. I'm surprised he doesn't have more burn marks now. Uh, a burn mark? Prosecutor Edgeworth, justice has been served before the goddess of law. For that, I give you my thanks. I should be the one thanking you. Please the best. I hereby announce my verdict. You shall be taken into custody for the murder of Jill Crane. I don't even get an, an exit line. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck me, I guess. Not even a why so serious. Fuck. I become a skinhead for all of you and you just take me away. Okay, right. whoa, okay, okay. Let's not go that far. That line has been used so much in the Alex Ryder series. Anytime someone is bald, they just call them a skinhead. It's really funny. What the fuck? <laughs> it's really funny. And every That's time they are, like, bald, they're also an asshole. That's more offensive than, like, any kind of, like, egg joke <laughs> you could make. <clears throat> April 6th, 9.44 a.m. Grand Tower. That's also, like, the, the book series where there is a, a fat character named Smithers who makes all of Alex's gadgets... And every time he is described, it, he is described how in, enormously fat he is in, like, every single possible way. It's like, he is so plump that his sweat is sliding off of his four chins. It's like, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's unnecessary. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, thank you very much. I'm so happy that you believed in me to the very end. There's no need to thank me. As a prosecutor... No, as a friend, I simply wanted to save you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I bring good tidings. This is like the Middle Ages, apparently. It seems that former Chairman DeBest has been safely detained in the detention center. Yeah, we watched How it. However, the search for the murder weapon, the auction gavel, continues. Blaise DeBest is a shrewd man. There's a good chance that he has already disposed of it. There is also one piece of testimony that concerns me. Blaze de Best mentioned that the only thing he did not fake were the letters. What do you mean? 
first, he found this letter in Jill Crane's clothes. Then, he also found this letter on Kay, who was unconscious in the storeroom. The contents of the letter seemed to suggest that the two had been corresponding with each other. Which is why Blaze de Best assumed that the two were working together. Have we figured out where Little Thief is yet, by the way? No. Ridiculous. That can't be right. After reading the two letters, he decided to pin the crime on Kay Faraday. In order to cast suspicion on her, he planted one of the letters in a noticeable spot. The deceased Jill Crane's left breast pocket. Isn't that just an excuse? Yes, that is what I thought as well. It may have simply been a last-ditch effort to save himself. However, before the stern eyes of the Goddess of Law, these are all trivial matters. His crime shall certainly not go unpunished. With this, I have finally fulfilled one of my long-standing missions. Judge Courtney, will you tell me what you know? Why did Blaze the best murder Jill Crane? And what lies hidden beneath this case? Yes, I don't mind. You have the right to know everything. Long ago, Jill Crane was in love with a cameraman. That man was pursuing the black market auction as a journalist. And then, before he could reach the truth, he was erased. Hmm. The feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. Although, in the end, she was the one who was murdered instead. I see. So that's what happened. While the Goddess of Law cannot condone her actions, we have succeeded in her goal of bringing Blaze de Best's crimes to light. Hmm. So Judge Courtney's goal was to expose Blaze de Best and reveal the dark secrets of the PIC. Um... By the way, what happened to the young prosecutor? We have been unable to contact him for some time now. Do you have any idea where he might be? I had not been truly working for him, so... I see. I feel very sorry for him. What you should be sorry for is the fact that he was kept in the dark until now. No matter how cruel reality is, he will have to accept it. If he can't... He won't be able to walk his own path in life. Ever. A father's influence is not something that is easily erased. However, I'm sure he will be able to change from here on out. Yes, that's right. Surely, uh, he must be right. Will I, too, be able to walk my own path in life? Kay, is your body alright? Uh, y yes, uh, thanks to you. I'm so sorry, even though you're my patient. You ended up getting suspected because of me. Ouch. Can't just take care of the patient's body. You gotta take care of the heart, too. That's my granny. Okay, how are your memories? I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. Well then, I shall take my leave here. I'll be presiding over Patricia Rowland's trial. That would be the trial for the murder of Horace Knightley. Who's in charge of the defense? Miss Crane was supposed to be her defense attorney, but now that she has passed away, we are currently arranging for a replacement defense attorney. Jill Crane had been in charge of Patricia Rowland's defense? I'll also have to get in contact with Sebastian quickly, since he's the prosecutor in charge. Well then, but please wait, what about Mr. Edgeworth's prosecutor's badge? What will happen to his prosecutor's badge? I like how all the judges just, like, fucked off. Yeah. <clears throat> like, alright, our, our time's up. With the chairman's arrest, the PIC is no longer functional. So I cannot answer that question easily. Perhaps one could say, only the goddess of law knows. But, but that's... You don't need to worry about me. This is the path that I have chosen. It seems you have no plans to change it, either. Of course not. I chose this path to seek the truth. With the departure of Blaze de Best, the law has once again returned to our hands. 
If you truly desire to continue the prosecutor's path, I am willing to assist you in reclaiming your badge. I appreciate the sentiment, but I must decline. I did not relinquish my badge with half-hearted feelings. I see. It seems that our paths of law will continue to run counter to each other. <laughs> Until our paths cross once again, I shall have to hold on to that badge. That was my intention from the start. She's like, I, I hate these two. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she, she, she hates them both, but it's like she still wants to go to family reunions with Edward, and she still wants to go on a Mac. dinner date with Courtney, so... However, on occasion, the goddess of law is quite generous. Please return this notebook to its proper owner. Kay's promise notebook. It seems this was scheduled to be put up for bidding at the black market auction. The name Kay is written on the notebook. It seems Blaze de Best quickly realized this belongs to the girl. Since the letters he found also contained the same name... You speak as if he really did not know about the letters. Are you saying that Blaze really did not prepare the letters himself? Yes, that man said so himself. Kay Faraday's goal was to steal back the notebook. Jill Crane's goal was to get revenge. In order to achieve their goals, the two teamed up to infiltrate the auction. Or so he says. Unfortunately, this is all Blaze's misunderstanding. It was purely a coincidence. If the attorney from the PIC and Kay really were acquaintances, it would be strange that she never mentioned it to me, considering her personality. <laughs> you really do trust her, don't you? Hmm. In the end, the notebook was used as another red herring, but... It's something that is very important to that girl, isn't it? I'll make a special exception and return it. I'm sure that's what the Goddess of Law desires. That's... uh... I appreciate it. I shall pray that she recovers her lost memories. Zoom. Um, is something wrong? Okay, I am returning something very important to you. I would love it if it was like an option to pick what I return to her. <laughs> like the end of chapter pick. Anyway, this is a great Edgeworth face. Yes. Uh, uh, this is... Here. I think I've seen this image before <clears throat> online. This would be a good meme format. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what it's why, why I saw it. You know what, I think, I, I think I've seen this, but it's photoshopped that he's handing, like, the L. Yeah. <laughs> Always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Never cry in front of strangers. Oh. Look, Daddy, I wrote them all down. Yep. I'll be sure to follow all of our promises and become a hero, just like you, Daddy. Ah, that's right. There was one more... I forgot to write down the most important promise. Promise number five. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember. I'll never ever forget them. Always try your hardest. To learn things you don't understand. That's right. I'm. I am. Oh my god. Is that. that is, it, is that. Is that painful? <laughs> she just put I on like the Deku mask. The great thief who steals the truth, K. Faraday. I'm the second Yadagarasu, Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. K. You remember. The grin. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, though. Thank you so much. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Even when I lost my memories, you were still always trying to save me, right? Huh. It seems you're back to normal. Wow, Kay, you've gotten better. Your health comes first. Now you can relax. Just make sure you don't run off and lose all your memories again. <laughs> Miss Jensen, Dr. Young, thanks for worrying about me. Hey, if you're feeling all better, how about changing back into your own clothes? I washed your clothes for you, okay? So they're nice and clean. These clothes. Wasn't Detective Gumshoe holding onto them? He said forensics was done with them, so he gave them back to me. Have they revealed the results of the analysis yet? Hmm, to be honest, I actually didn't think to ask about that. 
Now, now, more importantly, let's hurry up and get you changed, Kay. Huh. Still. Isn't it better if we do not remove her bandages? Ah, uh, she should be fine now. Please just let us use the fucking sprites. Kay just bumped her head. She didn't really have any other major injuries. Then why was she so heavily bandaged? To make you think she fell off the building. Better safe than sorry. A pound of prevention is worth an ounce of cure. That's my motto. What a troublesome motto. Come on, Kay. Let's get you dressed up over there. Now this is definitely what a great thief should look like. A smile certainly suits you best. In the past, and now as well. Miss Von Karma, thank you for coming too. I... I only came because Scruffy asked me to. What a sentence. Not Scruffy, he also wanted to see your energetic self again. Gummy! What happened to Gummy? Who knows? Seriously, we don't know. We haven't <laughs> seen him in Ace Attorney 4, Ace Attorney 5, or Ace <coughs> Attorney 6. I have something Maybe to he... ask of you. Can you please locate Detective Gumshoe for us? We haven't Maybe... eaten our meal yet. Maybe he was disgusted with the man who willingly threw away his prosecutor's badge. Uh, Detective Gumshoe. I must be going <clears> soon. <throat> I'll be taking these ladies in for questioning. What a sentence. Ah, what's gonna happen to the two of them? One aided in the murder of an attorney, the other forged an autopsy report 18 years ago. Those crimes definitely won't disappear. Of course, I will mention in court that they were being blackmailed by Blaze. They'll be just fine. As long as Granny's by my side, we're invincible. Yeah, I've only got like three more years left. Oh. Well then, take care. Don't try to die too fast. She, she hasn't said her goodbyes yet. Now then, Kay. She doesn't need it. Sorry to ask so soon right after you regain your memories, but I have some questions. Sure. Ask me anything you want. AMA. What were you doing on the day you lost your memories? On that day, I was asked to come to Gord Lake. I don't know who called me there, though. As I was watching the moon at Gord Lake, a person in a red raincoat approached me. All of a sudden, he used some kind of drug to knock me out. What? What is she saying? The place where Kay saw the moon was at Gord Lake. When I woke up, it seems I somehow ended up on the roof of the Grand Tower. My mind was still in a daze, so I stumbled around for a bit. That's when I found the person in the red raincoat collapsed. I was startled. And when I stepped back in panic... You know who we haven't seen in this story for a little bit? Fell from a high place and got knocked out cold again. Who's that? Shelly. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell has he been doing? And when I woke up, all my memories were gone. The person in the red raincoat. Who exactly was that person? Oh yeah, I was certain that I saw them walking in midair. Hmm, somehow this is all starting to make my head hurt. Please calm down. You're just a little confused because you've only recently gotten your memories back. Most likely, this is the main cause of your confused memories. Uh, your memories of two places. No. Yeah. <clears throat> this is probably the main cause of your confused memories. You saw the moon at both the Gord Lake Park and the Grand Tower rooftop. Which led you to confuse the two places. Huh? But aren't they totally different places? Even if I was in a daze, do you really think I'd get them confused? Most likely, there was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. The concession stand? Yeah, because they both have concession stands. The Grand Tower rooftop and Gord Lake have two points in common. They both have a cherry tree and a food stall. Uh, now that you mention it... Your memories were confused because you had been in two similar locations. The person that you first saw could not have been walking in the air. They were simply walking on the ground at Gord Lake Park. He must have gotten that scene confused with the Grand Tower rooftop. So that's what happened. How dare they steal the memories of a great thief? They'll pay for this. Nevertheless, I wonder who the person that assaulted Kay was. The person in the red raincoat who appeared at Gord Lake. Lot of heart. Well, that must be the bomb about to go off. Hmm, what's that noise? 
It sounds like it's coming from the storeroom. Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out. Well, what's this? My Shutterbug sense is tingling. That's my of a scoop. You're still here. <laughs> Just walk. I mean, I guess it's nice to have a camera. April 6th, Lada, you are taking the same pictures of the same fucking side of the same fucking statue. It's okay, I have a billion rolls of film. Bless you. Mr. Edgeworth, this walkie-talkie thing here is what's beeping. Tuh, this transceiver. Why do I feel like I've seen it somewhere before? Is Gumshoe dead? It's still beeping, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not particularly familiar with this sort of device. Come on, we have to answer it. Here goes. Oh, this is the shell. Yes, yeah, this is the Shelly transceiver. Hello, yeah. Edgeworth speaking. <laughs> Kay, please don't just answer it on your own. I'm speaking with Mr. Miles Edgeworth, I presume. This voice is... Shelly the Killer. Yeah, good call. I congratulate you on resolving the case, however. Can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? Are you aware of the mastermind who is pulling the strings behind this incident? You. Why do you know about the incident? That's not important, right? What if it's Gumshoe? What if he's the mastermind? <laughs> yeah, that's right, sir. I, uh... I just really couldn't stand you losing your badge, so I went total evil and stuff. Yeah, it was opposite day, so I felt like... chilling. You know, for once, uh, I felt like eating sirloin steak instead of noodles. That's not important right now, wouldn't you agree? Right now, we're discussing the mastermind behind this case. I've had an inkling that such a person existed even before you said anything. After all, there was evidence to suggest that someone had used K to disrupt the investigation. Huh? There was? So, who's this mastermind? I would like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Would you kindly show me the evidence that indicates the existence of a mastermind? You know, through the video call. You only get one shot at this, buddy. Um... Maybe the second horn missing? Maybe... <clears throat> I, I don't think that... I mean, it might be. I'm not- I'm not super confident, but maybe it's worth a shot, I guess. A missing mask? I think that's the- the missing mask is the one that, um, Blaze used. What about the other letter? Mm. No, no. That's them working together. Tick- tickets? That's... K's ticket stub to get up to it. Who wore the Jammin' Ninja mask? Kay? Um, I think that was just planted on her to make her look suspicious. Okay. I love the- I, that said, I love the- not only are we getting the killer here, we're also- like, also the Jammin' Ninja, re like, reference. Yeah. I fucking- I fucking love, um, very well my turnabout. Yeah, it's great. Actually, like... It's unfortunate that it comes immediately after a case that makes you want to kill yourself, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, makes you want to Persona 3 yourself. Um, Evoker 2 head. I don't know. The... Maybe it's something to do with this? I mean, what's the second page of this again? Oh, I mean, mm, I don't know. I think it's, it's, some, it's some of the evidence for this case, right? Not, not IS-7. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe it could be one of their sons who just sort of disappeared. But they they were just, like, made kind of pointless because the father abandoned the son. Uh, what's Lada's testimony? Lada's testimony? Yeah, hasn't helped. <clears throat> This is the K letter. 
I think it's the missing horn. That's the yeah, best. Yeah, that's the case only I've got. thing I can think of. Unless so. it's something to do with the Gemma Ninja Mask. Mm-hmm. I mean, you. I. I think that you probably get multiple chances. This is the end of the case thing. They. They always give you one chance. This indicates the existence of a mastermind in this case. Hmm, I can't say I really understand. I'm very sorry, but I also didn't understand. Yeah. So this wasn't it? Wasn't there anything that was left unexplained among the evidence? I await your answer, Mr. Edgeworth. Would you kindly show me the evidence that indicates Okay. Not even ticking your health bar. This indicates the existence of the mastermind. Something left unexplained? Maybe it is the, uh, oh, maybe it's about the murder weapon and it is about Lada's testimony. Oh, the missing gavel? Yeah. Nope. Something that was unexplained. I mean, the letters? No, the letters made sense. They were between each other, so they would work together. Hmm. K hasn't really told us about that, right? Like, we asked K what the deal was, and she didn't say shit about the letters. It was a letter that K allegedly sent to the victim. Okay. C come to think of it, I don't remember writing that letter at all. Oh, well, there you go. Who could have prepared this letter? I, too, am quite curious to know. So you're not the one who wrote the letter? What could I possibly gain from doing such an act? Is it not necessary for you to stand in court in order to make the truth clear? What can you possibly do now that your badge has been taken from you? I look forward to finding out from the shadows. This man. How does he know that? Do we have an understanding? Please ensure you do not betray my trust. Now then, if you'll excuse me. He said the case wasn't solved yet. What did he mean by that? And why would Mr. De Killer even bother telling us that? Ugh, nothing makes sense anymore. This case has not reached its true conclusion yet. However, although I've lost my prosecutor's badge, who I, who I am still has not changed. While I don't know where this may lead me, I shall reveal the truth. I swear it. This truly is like the game that sort of separates the new Your from the old. Just like so many characters stop appearing before, after this game. Before we continue, uh, I want to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm actually going to cut that episode. I think that's a good place to stop it. Ah, good. All right, Since we're already doing another episode, we don't actually have to... Uh, we don't have to do uh, a peek at the next one. We can just we can just play like yep. an hour of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching.